Hello everyone, today we will be talking about the most hyped effect in the Finch Resolve 19 and that of course is a film look creator. I'm going to show you how you can turn this shot into this shot using only two different nodes. So here we are in my project, I have this clip opened up from Austria. It's S-Log3, s Gamma 3 Cine and just exposed a little bit under but it's fine. So we're gonna be throwing the new effect on here. So we're gonna go to effects, type in film look creator or film. So you're gonna drag the film look creator effect onto your node. So this is definitely not the most optimal way to use film look creator, but I'm gonna use it like this for now to explain how it works. So in here we have all the basic settings. We have our blend options, how much of the effect you wanna see of each of the effects, of the overlays. Here you can choose your input settings, just like a CST. You can still use a CST and work in a different working space, obviously, and then after this effect, convert it back into it, since it just works the same as a CST. But for now, I'm just gonna choose my color space and gamma, and also my output, since I wanna keep it simple for this video. There we go. Now we've chosen that, we can select one of these here. These presets are quite bad in my opinion, but they're useful starting points. So I'm gonna start with the default 35. There's quite a few more tabs inside of this than just the CST. If you have color settings, where all your settings for color and exposure are. Split toning, it's very interesting. Vignette, halation, bloom, grain, some flicker, gate weave, and film gate. I have a crop on this, so there's no need for me to use the film gate option. So I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna turn off vignetting. I like all the other settings, so I'm gonna keep them on for now. For halation, I'm gonna turn it down a bit because I think it's a bit too extreme and way too spread out. There we go. And now we are in the upper section. So the first thing I wanna do is slightly lower the exposure and up the contrast. As you can see, that adds a nice punch to it. And now here we have a subtractive saturation and it absolutely looks lovely. You can push it really far without it looking goofy. Although obviously this is way too far. So I'm gonna push it this far, but now I'm gonna use the bleach bypass, which will desaturate it a bit to create a more neutral look again, to create nicer colors. And now we went from this to this. We can sh I can show you the color before and after, which is this to this. So as you can see, this is log, just the plugin and then the little adjustments we made. You can add a slight bit of fade in it. As you can see, you can add a fade completely, but I'm gonna add a little tiny touch, make it a bit colder. And there we go. Now we already have quite a nice shot in my opinion. And that's how you can simply create a quick look. Obviously we can add some split tone here. We can put the amount on a lot and then we can choose the perfect colors we want. I think it's already quite well balanced. I just wanna make sure everything is in the right section. And then I wanna make sure it adds a little bit more blue than it already has. And then we're slowly gonna turn it down to a nice amount. So we went from this to this. It adds more color contrast between the skin tones and the background. It makes the greens look a lot nicer. Now the rest we can just leave how it is. Just wanna add one more note in front of this, which is a color slice, which is the new effect that I've talked about in the last video. In here we can select the skin tones, we can look at the skin tones, we're gonna click shift H, select the skin tones, we're gonna very precisely try and mask them out, well as precisely as we can, we're gonna make them a little bit less saturated and a little bit lighter by lowering the density, so they're not as dark as they were before. And now we can look at the greens and the yellows. So the yellow colors are mainly gonna be my point of interest where I'm gonna select them turn shift H off again, slightly push them towards green, greenish blue, saturate them a little bit, and then drag up the density quite a bit. Now you can see that has quite a big impact on the image. I'm gonna turn off the grain for now since I don't really like the grain on this, and I think the bloom is a little bit too extreme. Now this one note here made it from this into this. As you can see, that's also a very powerful tool combined with other tools that already exist or this other new tool we're trying right now. So now this is how you quickly create this look. Although there's a better way to do it because I, for example, also want to affect the blue, but I added that blue with the split tone effect. So the better way to do it right now is to go in here, find a nice color space that reacts well to color changes. I prefer Log C. Take this one there, put it behind it, 
And now we have to take it from two to three nodes, sorry, Alt S, add a node behind it. And then we need to add our color space transform, the normal one on the last node. Put the color space we just put as output space, which was area log C. Rec 709, give it 2.4. And now we need to change our settings again because they're off. As you can see, they're massively off and we don't want to have that going on right now. So we also need to change some settings in here since they're not matching anymore. Now we've matched it to this. And now there's a better way to adjust the blues. For example, we have some blues up here. We want to adjust them. You can see, you can properly select them now. You find them. And we can slightly change the hue of them. I don't want to, but also the amount of it, for example, or how dark they are. I want to keep them a bit darker because it adds some more contrast to it. Could look if that's possible with this one as well. Sorry, wrong, wrong slider. So that second option is the superior option for adjusting things after your plugin. But the first option is the easiest and quickest one, adjusting things before it. Although I would still do this within a color management work, managed workflow, which I'll quickly show you right now. So we're going to keep these the same, but we're going to change the input settings of our color override to the same thing we had before. We're gonna put it in from this to this. You see now it goes to itself. Now before this, you wanna add another note. I'll quickly label them by the way. We're gonna add another color space transform. And on this one, we're gonna choose our input color space, which is the one of our camera. And output it to the one we selected within the film look creator and also our output. Then we can do creative adjustments in between here and do exposure adjustments before the FLC, but still keep a very nice amount of dynamic range. So by this, I mean, I can go in here I can greatly lower this exposure here and change things up in my own way. This is how I would use it personally in this color menu setup, since it gives me a lot of control, but also keeps the footage in a very big color space to move around and then converts it into the final delivery format, which means you have more space to play around with before converting it, which minimizes the amount of impact you leave on your footage. And then we have a little pipeline we can copy over to other shots, for example. To get a cool look as well. You can copy this over. It's very interesting. We're gonna copy it over. Quickly do exposure adjustments. Go into the field F FLC, not PLC, FLC. Slightly make the white balance warmer or something like that. And then you copied your look. Obviously, this look I made fits a colder scene way better than a warmer scene. So this looks way better than on here, but it's a really cool way to manage your colors, adjust them in a very quick and easy way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a very quick rundown of how I would use this plugin on the simplest form to the form I will actually use it, which is the advanced form. I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.